Okay, this is another one of those scrap to scene pieces. I just can't seem to get away from these things. I love the challenge of it, and I also don't like wasting paper, but this was a, another uh, just test print um, piece of paper from uh, my uh, Braring um, applications of uh, stamp impressions. This one's kind of a tough one in terms of the composition because I wouldn't want two of these seaside coves up here. And I, I don't know, even having one of them up there, you know what I mean? I, I wouldn't compose even this portion of it. But here we're stuck with two, okay? So this is going to be kind of an example of open versus closed images, okay? Now an open image would be something where there's a lot of open space within the image. You know, it's light on the inside. There's just, you know, a lot of dots. There's not a lot of solid areas, okay? Now I have a lot of designs that are both closed and open, you know, for a little bit of balance, but if, it, if it's something, if it's an object that um, could benefit from additional color additions, then I usually leave it open, okay? But I like to contrast it against closed spaces so we have a really balanced and um, uh, varied um, design um, type of thing. Okay, so anyways, I don't want two of these up here. I guess it could be a river or something like that, but then you wouldn't have the uh, the covered bridge like that, you know, just right in the the waterway of a uh, of a bridge like that, you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with one of the most, I don't know, kind of solid images that we have in terms of um, the, uh, the format that we're going to be working with here in the form of sky, okay? So I can't just stamp like some kind of moon there, otherwise I'm going to have the ripples showing right through that open space, right? So you have to go with something a little bit more solid than that. So the Milky Way kind of fits the bill because there's a lot of solid black area here. Now because I stamped this out in black, that's pretty much going to dictate that I'm going to have to use black right over the top of it, okay? I, we might be able to see some of that still showing a little bit, but we can apply additional tone, okay? Now I have a lot of other, well not a lot of other, but I also have this other space down here that's going to have to be um, addressed. I don't necessarily want an ocean right there. You wouldn't have this covered bridge right there. But, you know, that could be some sort of lake in the background, you know, like this bridge, you know, covered bridge leading up to this lake in the background. You know, this is supposed to be like, kind of like a seaside cove, but it can certainly be used for just any kind of body of water. Okay, let's see. We need a, a mask. We need a mask for that horizon line. I'm going to undermask a little bit by, uh, I don't know, close to a quarter inch or so of that space right there. I want to have, stamp this down and then have a big white space in between um, that, you know, that horizon line and the, uh, and the sky. Okay. All right, so uh, let's just go. This is going to have to be really filled in with some additional tones, so uh, you don't have to be too careful about any of this. All right, so I'm just stamping this in black. Okay, and I'm holding this down a little bit longer too because I need to really get some pressure around that. Uh, mast area. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can see a lot of that uh, seaside cove showing through my open area right there, right? Okay. All right. Take this and do the same thing over here. I'm overlapping it at a big angle, so there's going to be another part of it going in here. This is just kind of being, you know, it's going to be serving as texture, okay? Okay. Now we need a couple areas right here to fill in. Okay. Go like that. And we have this area right here. That area right over here 
or around the entire perimeter is probably going to get pretty dark, so I don't have to kind of worry about it too much. But we have the stamp, so we might as well use it. You know? Okay, I'm going to fill in more of that um, space right there with some of this more solid part of the Milky Way. All right, now this Milky Way does not look like this. I'm stamping it over another image completely so you don't see kind of the twinkling stars and things like that if you were stamping it on a white piece of paper but that just comes to show you what you can use something like this for and you'll see the uh the results in the uh in the end okay oh yeah i wanted to show, take some photos of this during the process okay all right now we have this area right in here that's kind of a problem area because you wouldn't have this. I doubt if you'd have like a, you know, a bridge like this approaching, you know, the beach or something like that there. So I'm going to fill in this whole area right here with some additional trees. And this will just be some kind of lake out there in the distance, okay? Now the trees, um, we'll go with the, some of this. This is a pine and deciduous in here. This is tree cluster. And these are the uh, maple pear. I can use this in addition. I, or you can just... You know, this one suffice too. But let's see how this will go. Okay. I feel like I haven't stamped in a while. When I, haven't, when I don't stamp for a few days, it feels like it's been a month. Okay. We're just going to lay this down like so. And um, I want some of this up into that you know, that uh, shoreline right there, too. So I want to kind of eradicate this portion of the viewable shore, okay? Just so I want that in the distance out there, okay? So just, you know, paper towel masking right here. I have some of the trees showing like that, as you can see, okay? If you can find easier masking, I'd be very surprised. This is an easy process. You just have to, it's not kind of easy in concept if you have to break a bunch of habits, you know, that are just kind of really locked in, you know. So you just have to stay kind of flexible. You have to kind of get used to the idea of overlapping things. And then it's, you know, becomes easy. There's nothing easier than just going like this and stamping it like that, right? But... You know, a lot of times people are really used to doing some very, very careful and intricate masking with um, uh, post-it notes, you know, and cutouts and things like that. And that's needed for outline designs, but these are not outline designs. They're tonal, and they're tonal with the entire concept and painstaking kind of uh, uh, design um, um, building um, by me. Um, of how these things can work together. Okay, now I'm I'm just kind of filling in the edges right here, and hopefully, you know, you can't see any, uh, you know, real distinctive areas where one stamp ends and the other one begins. See that maple pear down here? I just kind of masked off this bottom portion like that, and it's just right here, okay? And it just becomes, it's like a bush, okay? This is a tree, right, because you see the trunks, uh, tree, bushes, tree, bushes, all right? And that's what you want, really, out of a good design. A good design, um, you know, I mean, this, these, see, these galls right here are never going to become a bush, you know. Maybe they can become, you know, stamp them in, I don't know orange or something like that. Maybe they're going to be butterflies or something like that. But, you know, within reason, you know, there are a lot of stamps that can be used for multiple types of um, applications. And that's always what we want, right? But you have to kind of look at the, the designs. Here's taller trees. There's shorter trees in the distance, okay? You just mask off the bottom part, stamp them out. Okay, so anyways, this is looking pretty good in terms of uh, what we've addressed right here. I... I I hesitate to put any real larger trees right here in the foreground now because I kind of like that tree row and if I put go the real solid one against that we'll kind of lose this nice road here so 
Um, I'm kind of leaning towards just leaving it as is. All right. Um, all right. It's definitely going to be a night scene, okay? It's just, that's what we're, you know, dealing with, especially with such a dark, um, Milky Way uh, image out there. All right. I'm going to stamp, I'm going to rip this in half right here. Okay, this is an old kitchen sponge, okay? And I've been playing around with that. It's, it's a little bit bulky when I'm using it big like that. I'm just going to tear this in half. This is an old sponge that we had designated for the trash, okay? And even if you buy new ones of these, right, we, how much money do we spend on, uh, you know, uh, uh, stamping supplies? Now, this kitchen sponge like this, you know, I could probably use... I don't know, for the next five years, and like I said, this one was, des you know, designated for the trash. You can see how old it is, okay? Let's grab some ink, okay? Inked up pretty good. Not on the scouring side, but on the softer sponge side. Let me pull off this, too. It's nasty. This is like the grossest um, sponge you'll ever find. Not kitchen sponges in general, but mine. Okay, it's just really old. Okay, here's the thing. I'm going... Okay, I'm going to have to go pretty dark up here in the sky. I'm going to leave a little bit of kind of light up there like that. Okay, but I don't know. That took me, what, I don't know, five seconds? I don't think it took five seconds. But look at this now. See this right down here in the water? You know, kind of Leave a little bit of light down there. It's not super light, but it's a little bit, right? Okay. How do you create light? You just don't ink it up. Okay. Now, I could put some green in these trees or something like this. Usually at nighttime, you don't get a lot of variation in terms of color, you know, with that moonlight. Okay. All right. Now... On buildings, what I usually do is I usually leave the rooftop a little bit lighter. I don't want it, like, stark white, although you could, but um, I like to leave it a little bit more varied, okay? Now watch this down at the base of the trees. I like to give those a little bit more tone, okay? And for um, roadways... I like to leave them a little bit light as a visual lead-in, okay, to the scene. So this little lighter area down here. And this isn't great because I'm kind of I'm not working around anything real definitive here. But the fact is, is that I've just left some areas light. See that little light on the rooftop? Little light here on some of these trees. I mean, it's not like if you left that one light and that one dark, it's not like oh my god, I made a mistake. What you're doing is you're just creating variation, and that's the important thing, okay? You don't have to think logically, okay? You just have to be observant of what's being created on your card. So, in other words, you're just creating variation. Light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. It's called checkerboarding, okay? It doesn't... It, it, every little bit of light and dark it does not have to be uniform. It's better if it's not. What does that mean for our applications? It means there's more variation and there's no right and wrong, you know, when you're doing this type of thing. This is a medium blue that I'm using right here. Um, I usually go with something a little bit lighter to start off with and I work, you know, through a much um, wider value scheme with whatever color scheme I'm using. But, I don't know, I just did a, a scene recently where I just used like two blues and I thought, you know, that looks pretty good. <laughs> I don't know, maybe for like for the last 30 years. Okay, you know, I mean, if you do use more colors, okay, layered like this, it can look much deeper in terms of saturation, but I don't know. For the sake of kind of a, you know, an expedited card. I just went with two blues. I, I think I might add in Caribbean with this one. This I love Caribbean blue. It's a little bit of a warmer uh, blue, just for a little bit of a temperature variation. 
Okay, this is Prussian blue right here. It's a really dark blue from Marvy. Really like this one. Okay. You can tap and streak with this. Uh, what you're doing right here is you're just kind of reiterating kind of what you did with your previous color, you know, the lighter blue. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to retain that light area, you know, for variation. This is where everyone kind of loses their light, you know, you know when they're kind of just learning lighting. They get, the, get, they get it down with the lighter tones, but oftentimes when they move into the dark tones, it's like they go over the, the light and it's gone, you know, which is okay, you know, not to panic about that. But what you do with your next darker color, which is going to be black, just kind of do that thing where you retain some of the lighter areas, and then what you thought was really dark by putting something darker next to it, it'll look lighter by contrast. It doesn't make it lighter, but it just by perception it becomes lighter. So see, okay, now see with the darker tone right here, what I'm doing is I'm going a little bit more perimeter oriented with it like this, okay? And when I go into the black, that's when everything really starts merging together. I think things are coming together, though, pretty well, you know, in terms of the scene here. But it's the black that really kind of ties things together, because that's the ink that was used to print out, you know, to get my impressions. So it's kind of the, that'll be the binder. This is kind of just the, uh, the preliminaries before it that'll give it the richness and the kind of the emotion of the scene you know, color, um, there's a certain type of emotion to it, especially when it comes to uh, using different temperatures, okay? Cool colored scenes have a different kind of emotional quality to them than warmer ones or neutral. Okay, I'm going to look for a little bit more texture down here. I thought, uh, okay, well, let's go a little bit darker down below here. I like to create a strong vignette, so I like to go a little bit darker around the entire perimeter. All right, now this isn't a super refined, you know, tonal piece that I'm usually going for, you know, but I'm just going for something kind of, I'm trying to be expedient with this uh, piece right here, just to show you that you can go pretty fast. I mean, this is a half page scene too, so it's not small. Most of the times I'm working um, quarter page, you know, or closer to it, like a, you know, four by six type of thing, you know, in the uh, four and a quarter by five and a half quarter. But, okay, here's the black. But you can, you know, well, what time are we into? We're at the 12 minute mark, okay? You know, naturally, we had our impressions, you know, already kind of printed out, but sometimes, uh, you know, it's, it's easier to start with a, you know, blank piece of paper because we can compose it however we want, but... You know, this is going pretty fast right here. Okay. Kind of see this where I'm putting it in the shadows. And when you create a kind of a strong vignette, you don't have to go all the way to black. I'm doing it on this one because I'm having to eradicate a lot of, uh, you know, kind of existing things in there uh, from a compositional standpoint because this wasn't meant as a composition before. It was just meant as a, a test, you know, just to test a piece of paper for my impressions for that uh, previous video. See that? I'm making the, uh, the side of that uh, covered bridge darker. It really makes that, you know, the rooftop stand out a bit. Yeah, you can use a little bit of uh, alcohol markers right in the back there, too, I think. Okay. This is looking very, very textural. Not only because of the Milky Way up there, which is all texture, but just because um, of this sponge right here. It's, you know, it's there's a lot of... Um, texture to the sponge, so I'm getting a very textural kind of quality to it. All right, let's use um, some of our mask here again. Let me let me create a little bit of differentiation between sky 
and surface, okay? So let's go down here in the water. Let's just mask off the, uh, the water, uh, the horizon line. And let's bring in some tone like this, okay? Like that. Not getting a real strong black because I really kind of rinsed out this sponge before I started this uh, scene. So it was really, I don't know, maybe it was over, too much, too full of water. So kind of when I'm applying this, it's I'm getting a little bit grayer, yeah, which is okay. But I'm trying to get it much darker. So I'm trying to build up that uh, ink on the side with tapping. All right. So a little bit of differentiation between surface and sky, right? Okay. All right. Now let's see if we can go with uh, my other side of the sponge here, okay? That's where it was torn off like that. Okay. Caribbean blue. It's a little bit of a warm blue. If you have like a number 10 blue Marvy or I don't know. Uh, some other type of blue. I'm not sure of all the different colors out there from the different lines and brands of inks, but you can use it, but it gives it a little bit of a stronger glow. See the difference between that and over here? And that's where you get, you know, kind of the benefit of um, blending and layering like that. You know, you can blend two blues the exact the same, and it's not going to change it. But if you, you know, kind of introduce a little bit of variation, it could be a violet in here. Blues go really well with violet. Something like that would be good in here, too. But I just like this little bit of a, a color glow. It, when you start moving into kind of the greenish tinge of blue, it introduces um, a color, an analogous color, which is a color right next to it. One color on the color wheel. And when you blend those together like that, you create a color glow. You can watch a video that I did on color glows and how to achieve them by, uh, you know, employing that... Um, analogous color uh, trick, okay? And it's really easy to do. Just blend a yellow and an orange, a uh, blue and a green, what is it, reds and magentas, or you know, that type of thing, purples. Just lay down a color next to it that will blend into it. You don't have to know everything about color theory and you don't need to get a color wheel, you know? can be visual. You can blend these two together like that. These two are analogous. Uh, these two are analogous, kind of going in the green direction. Okay, so I think that looks, you know, pretty decent in terms of our color scheme right here and lighting scheme. Okay, now let's add um, some variation into this. I mean, this alone to me kind of looks unfinished, especially in, in comparison to what we can do with some additional um, applications and media. You can use a, a white gel pen or something like that or white paint pen and add additional stars up there. Let's go for some good texture right here with the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White though. Okay, and I haven't used this for you know, a couple weeks probably. Let's mix this up a little bit. If you have to, you just add some water to it to reconstitute and get some of that nice and fluid. Want it kind of a consistency of like some thick maple syrup. Okay. And let's take an old toothbrush and load it up, okay, with some paint. Take out a lot of the excess that or all of it just so you don't get big blobs of it. The thinner uh, your paint is, you just have to take off a little bit more, okay? So just be careful, you know, um, that you don't have a ton of ink in your brush still, okay? All right. You don't need a lot in there, though. Oh, well, if you're working on a gigantic, uh, you know, double-page spread or something like that. You might need a lot, but you can always re-ink. Okay, so I have a lot of ink in this. Let's get this splatter painted down here, and this will give, you know, the, uh, the scene some additional texture and depth. And I like that I get variation. Some of these little dots, paint splatters, are um, 
lighter than others, or bigger than others. Yeah, see, you see that? So it kind of fills that out. We can't even see the uh, Seaside Cove anymore, right? All right. And what I like to do sometimes is uh, I like to just kind of spray it overall. I don't know. It doesn't necessarily make sense. You know, it could be snowfall or something, though. Maybe it is, you know. It looks even good, like in, I don't know, like a sunset scene or something like that. It's like pollen in the air or something like that. If you have allergies, this one will not affect your allergies. And you can just get the benefit of the uh, the visual of it. But look at that texture over it. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that little texture. It's in the water. Here and there, but it's mostly up in the sky, right? Okay. Now, um, let's see. Here's a blue Marvy paint pen. This is a water-based extra fine Sharpie paint pen, okay? It comes in a, a pack of, I don't know, like five uh, pastel colors. Um, and here's a Meowzin white acrylic paint pen. You can, There are so many brands of these on Amazon, and I think they're exactly the same. They look like they come out of the same factory. Same factory either sells them to different retailers with their label on it or it's the same factory but they just have like five different labels that they slap on there to make it look like five different vendors i don't know you know what i mean just so they you know they eliminate some competition or the competition is themselves so i don't know how it goes but i like these pens a lot you have to get these sh uh, shook up i was looking at someone was asking about these today and i looked at a review um, for one website, and it was like one out of five stars. She said because none of these worked, okay? Well, when these are brand new, the person probably didn't know how they work. They, they're a spring trigger, right? So if you're familiar with these types of pens that have that, you know, that ball bearing inside, you know, to shake it up, and they're spring-loaded, you, you just have to press on it, depress this down a little bit like that. See, it presses down like that. Okay, I can't do that. It's too stiff. But just to get it flowing... I've been using these things for years, and they work perfectly. But you have to shake it up every time, and sometimes you have to depress it. Don't pogo stick it, otherwise it's going to, you know, spill out this big thing of ink, okay? Um, all right, this is where uh, a lot of the fun comes into play when you're kind of adding in. Now, see, I'm doing this blue right here for a little bit of highlights here and there. Uh, the blue in a dark blue area won't stand out so much and that's kind of what I want. I don't want it to, you know, these little highlights to stand out so much in the darker areas. You can have some uh, white stars up there with the uh, the white um, Dr. Martin's bleed proof white, but add, add in some additional blue ones up here. It's a blue colored scheme. This is kind of a blue and greenish um, tinge up there with the Caribbean blue. You can put a few green ones up there. I think that would look fantastic, too. All right, so just kind of building this up. Eh, this is extra fine, but it's kind of coming out a little bit too thick, so sometimes I wipe off my tip there a little bit. And then I'll just dab on a little bit eh, more delicately, and sometimes I can get a finer dot. <laughs> this one's giving me a real consistent, pretty thick dot, though, so I'll just be careful about that. Okay. I'm adding these highlights kind of on the top surfaces of things. Like, can you see the lighter area on these trees right here? Okay. We have a, a dark side and a light side, right? I'm putting the dots on the lighter tops, okay? Because that's where the lighting is coming from. It's top lit. Now, you can't see this. You'll be able to see more of it when I use the white... Um, pen. Okay, now what I was mentioning too is uh, see this rooftop right here. There's not a big, you know, differentiation between that value of the top of the roof and these background trees. So I'll just go in with this um, alcohol marker, and this is just a you know fairly light blue. And here's another darker blue. And see this? I'm just kind of coloring those trees behind. The, I put light, you know, light blue down, and this is a darker blue. But now see how that bridge rooftop is standing out more. Then what I usually do is I go back in with a light one, and I'll blend the dark in a little bit more, okay? 
So you go dark, light, dark. Or you go dark. I mean, a light, dark blender. You can do that too. Okay, so now, now I've toned over that with alcohol ink, so I'll go back in and put a little bit of um, detail in here with these little dots. These little dots, you, you can't kind of, uh, don't underestimate kind of the power of these. These are sometimes the smallest of little details, but they can add in huge, huge um, impact in terms of texture and lighting because when you're doing light into dark, um, you're adding this element of lightness into a darker area. So it's like you're turning on the lights in that area. It's like if there was like one star up in the sky, you know, for a starry sea tonight type of thing. You know, you have this vast open space, but if you get this one little shining star, I mean, that little star is going to have a lot, big impact. And I'm talking about in real life. So that's no different than, um, you know, your stamp scenes, okay? Now, I'm adding a lot more dots, but I'm just saying just in general. Okay, so that was the blue. So I even put a little bit of a highlight on some of those rocks down there, but see that little area down there? Instead of just being this big swatch of uniform blue, you have these little rocks that are kind of reflecting light down there. I'm going to be putting in some additional um, foreground down here so it won't look so kind of isolated in terms of this texture down there, though, okay? So everything, we're layering everything on top of the, one another. All right, this is the white paint pen. Now, these white acrylic paint pens, they're really cheap, okay? But they really serve their purpose really well. But you really do have to shake these up even if you're using them every day because... Um, that paint and the binder inside here really separate. So um, if you don't shake it up, it's really, really translucent, okay? As a matter of fact, sometimes I lay down some of these little white dots, and uh, they might dry a little bit um, darker looking than when they're first applied. And that's mostly if I don't shake this up, okay? So now you can see how much the white really kind of stands out because it's there's lar you know there's more contrast between white and you know the pastel blue so let's see that little shimmering kind of uh, specular light on the water surface it's like twinkly now right before it was just kind of a dull you know general swatch but now it looks much more um, defined maybe defined in terms of lighting at least. See this right here? I'm going into some of these areas. So I'm kind of layering some of those uh, blue ones with the white. Maybe I'll use less white, I don't know, you know, than the blue. Okay, I'm putting some of this on top of some of these little bushes in the grass. You can even, some of these could just even be wildflowers. You know, if you're doing this in pink over, you know, some of these uh, bushes, it's like, uh, or they can be just leaves turning a different color. Uh, while I love spring types of applications of this um, white pen type of thing, it uh, it puts a little pop of color within a space, you know, to represent those flowers or growth in springtime, you know, nothing more. Uh, iconic than uh, wildflowers in the spring, right? Or or trees, you know, blossoming. Flower color, you know. Okay, so anyways, that's a lot of uh, texture down in here. When you look at it like this, it's really busy looking with all that texture, right? See that all in the trees, on the tops of the tree, limbs, on the water surface, look at all that texture, right? I mean, but this is what you're going to be looking at a scene at arm's distance anyways. People aren't usually holding it right up to their nose and saying, oh my gosh, how busy that looks. Although it is a little bit busy. But we'll mellow this out now a little bit with some additional um, forms in here. Um, this is tack and peel on a acrylic block for my unmounted stamps if you haven't seen these videos before. Okay. Um, I'm 
going to go with this Versafine, or you can just go with your black dye base pad as well. Sometimes the Versafine um, uh, oil based pads will give you a really dark print, okay? All right, let's create some kind of overhang here. Just kind of, I'm framing the scene off a little bit with some additional things. Now, even though as dark as that sky got, you can see how much darker the, the Versafine is. Now, you've, the Versafine is a pigment ink, okay, and it's oil-based, so you can't, like, lay this down and then go over with some additional um, dye-based inks. It's just, you know, it's going to smear because uh, the, that oil-based, you know, ink, which is like paint, is just going to be sitting on the surface. You really have to allow this a long time to dry, okay? doesn't dry at all on you, maybe emboss it. Ah, there's different papers that just don't dry, like um, photo paper. This ink would just will never dry on you, I'm convinced. Maybe if you're in a different state, I always say like Arizona, you know, who knows, maybe it'll dry out there. It's so arid and everyone's got their air conditionings going because, you know, it's 115 out there right now. But, um, uh, I don't know, you just have to play around with it. Okay, that's up there. Now we have some additional areas down below here. Let's put, um, let's get some additional forms down here. I was thinking about this tree, but I don't think I want that. I want something kind of closer to us. Okay, there's this road here. Okay, so I'll, maybe I'll put this um, like to each side of the road. This is twisting leaves. Okay. All right. And I like to layer that with some um, of the reeds, like so. Okay. I like to leave an opening in here too for the uh, viewer's uh, eye, E Y E, to enter the scene. Okay, so like this, I left a little space here, like that, you know, so you can get in there. Uh, if there's like a deer or something in the background, maybe you put some bushes right here, so it kind of puts a barrier between you and, you know, the thing you want to observe. But anyways, okay, so that is that. Oh my gosh, I forgot about something completely, but it's not too late. Okay, white pigment ink. We have so many different... Um, you know, potential tools at our disposal these days. And that's been for, you know, 20, 30 years, but um, <laughs> uh, compared to what we were doing 30 years ago, maybe. Okay, so this is a just a cotton ball here, and let's get a little bit of a, a little bit more texture in here, okay? I left a little bit of light down here. If things got really dark, um, sometimes I can't use any of this pigment ink because it kind of stands out. But if you have a little bit of lighting in your scene still, that's the retention of that um, lighter area. Remember how I said, uh, you know, retain some of that? It allows us to go in with some additional um, textures like this. Okay, so this is kind of like going to look like kind of a low-line fog or something. Okay, this is coming out a little bit blotchy on me. I need to contour my little sponge applicator here. I'll kind of tap it off like that to really flatten it off too. Okay, now you want to do this really, really slowly and like a dry brush effect. Don't go over your um, Versafine. I should, have stand, I should have done this before I did the Versafine. Now I have to kind of watch out for the Versafine and don't go over it, okay? See, this is a little bit of this fog down here. I'm tapping really lightly to where, like, even like 10 taps, I could barely see anything, okay? That's what you want, though. I'd rather get what I'm going for with this type of thing in, like, 30 taps or something than in one, because one's going to be very precarious, so if it kind of barely comes off of this as I'm building it up, then I have a lot more control over it. That's where um, people have um, kind of, you know little of adjustment period. They, they expect results instantly, okay? Which is understandable if you're coming from like a like a stamp and then pen coloring type of um, tradition. 
But this is something that, you know, where you're building things up a little bit slower. It's more akin to, like, maybe pastels or something. Okay, so, but see how that little misty little area is down there? And that kind of mellows out all that, you know, real high texture too. And I put some of it up here too. It makes it look like a little bit of mist in the trees. It kind of looks a little bit more dreamy, I feel, when you're introducing kind of this uh, little foggy type of thing. It, it's what uh, they use in um, TV shows. And, you know, people are hiking out in the woods or something like that. They got the fog machines going, you know, full bore. We were watching this series on Netflix. I thought, oh my gosh, they they must have had 20 fog machines, you know, for that these scenes that they were shooting. It just makes it more kind of dreamlike and it puts more light into the air. Okay, there's a little bit of area up here on the, uh, the water that was a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm... Just kind of reiterating that with some soft light up there, okay. Now you don't want to put this everywhere, you kind of want to oscillate it just like your lighting. So you have the soft light and crisp light, dark and light, okay. If I put it everywhere then it, you know, it could be like a, just an overall foggy day, but it, sometimes it looks kind of weird. And I think it's more effective when you, you kind of oscillate things, you don't have it everywhere so that the areas where you do have it looks extra special because it's contrasting against the areas that don't have any of it, okay? All right, um, let's put something like a little bit of an extra larger stars up in my sky area. I still see some kind of the harder lines in a couple areas where the seaside cove is showing through the, um, you know, the, the Milky Way stamp, you know, I see it because, you know, of course I know it's there, but if you gave that card like this to someone, I don't think they're going to say, hey, there's the ocean up there. But what we can do is we can kind of push that back a little bit. Here's the same pigment ink on a, ooh, way too much of it to you really need to take it off. Okay. And then let's make some of these, um, little stars, or the larger stars maybe, up in the sky. We'll make them glow a little bit. I can go over some of that Dr. Martin's little dots, or I can just go over the ones that I just kind of added in with the paint pen. Okay, so see those little, you know, the stars up in the sky. Some of them are a little bit brighter than others. Now let me try to put one up here. It creates this little glowing little star up there. I like that too. Okay, let me let me put. I'm gonna do that little glowing thing down here. I don't know. It doesn't make sense from a logical standpoint down here, but I don't know. Like I said, I'm just going for this kind of more dreamy looking uh, scenario here. So you know, you have these little dots glowing in the landscape. You know, the water down there. Who knows, maybe they're fairies or something like that, if you like that type of uh, kind of uh, iconography. It's really fun to kind of put that little whimsical aspect of it. Um, objects into your landscape, too. Okay, so anyways, you see some of it down here. I create a little bit of a variation down here. So those little glowing little dots like that. And there you have it. Um, see how it's more kind of dreamy looking, I guess, down here now. And there is a scrap of scene right there. We've completely eradicated the second uh, body of water. In fact, I didn't really like that body of water in position with this too, but I think that looks pretty good. It's like a great lake or something like that out there in the distance, maybe. Um, you know, I could have put a mass down here and put a little bit of a tree line down there too, which would be kind of interesting. But I don't think I'm going to do that because I don't want to have to, you know, wait for this to dry, mask off, and then stamp some additional trees in here. But at, looking at it, you know, kind of after the fact, I think I, I could have added some more tree lines on the other side of that lake, uh, just, you know, as we have some trees um, in the foreground of the, uh, on this side of the lake. Okay, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed this scene. And uh, remember the idea of the um, scrap to scene 
um, concept is, you know, you can really um, kind of exercise your creativity and test out new types of compositions and uh, to work certain types of problems, compositional problems, coloring problems, lighting problems, etc. During the process, and I think kind of working through those types of things um, kind of lends itself to kind of a creative spirit, but it also brings about um, kind of this strengthening of technique, okay? Uh, meaning um, I really had to exercise um, certain types of coloring and to um, subdue certain things through the use of tone by maybe darkening it. And then I bring uh, an element of light back into it. So I'm subduing by dark, I'm subduing and strengthening by the two con um, um, principles of light and dark. I can push things back with dark and sometimes I could bring things forward or push darker things back by just layering down an additional light element over the top of it. So um, getting rid of um, a Seaside Cove up here, we darkened it with some additional um, objects and we darkened it with some additional tones, but then we um, also layer it with, uh, with uh, the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, um, paint pens, and then uh, the White pigment ink. <laughs> There's so much stuff in here. I've forgotten what, everything that I did here. Okay? And then we have all these little techniques throughout here. You know, the same types of things going on in here, which is just used to enhance kind of the area down here. But you can really eradicate with those same techniques that you use down here. You know, this is kind of for um, um, highlighting and enhancing, but it can also use to eradicate up here, those same types of things, but don't see it as something different. It's the same type of thing. We added color down here, and then we embellished with um, um, specific highlights with the pens and kind of a more general one, and that's the exact same thing we did up here, okay? So if you kind of figure out the relationship between all these things and see it as kind of the same thing, but they can achieve different types of looks, and that's not even mentioning, you know, just layering stuff over the top of it with this foreground image. That brings, you know, ties things together too, and it kind of pushes everything further back as well. Um, but all these techniques uh, can be universally applied for different types of purposes, and they can be almost the opposite purpose in some ways. Um, and it's all the same. So anyways, uh, wrapping up here, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section, and remember to always kind of see your pieces through and give them a chance and uh, to develop your techniques and whatnot through that entire process, and I think you'll be surprised and you'll get some of the best results you ever have because you're having to think about it and really work with the, uh, you know, your um, given um, types of techniques, whether you've practiced in them or not, or this is your first time using them. Um, it all comes, comes together in the end. Might go through kind of an ugly period, which certain scenes do, like this one when I was first kind of inking it up, you know. It was just the preliminaries, but when by the time you get everything down here, it all seems to come together. All right, so again, thanks again for watching. And uh, thanks as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel.